Uh, right, greetings respective viewers. I'm standing on Whitehall in London. Uh, so this street with all the civil service buildings and the Ministry of Defence. But there's a protest here, an Operation Banner protest. So Operation Banner was the United Kingdom's longest military operation, 1969 to 1997. Uh, and it was in the United Kingdom, so it's in Northern Ireland. So that's when mass disorder broke out in 1969 till um, the second IRA ceasefire in 1997. And so these, are, these people are former military um, personnel, they're officers, other ranks and so on, and they're protesting um, about the way that some of them are investigated for what went on in Operation Banner. It's obviously three and a half thousand people were killed in, in, in that, that conflict. About a tenth of them were killed by the British security forces. You see, you see the British Army flag there with the cross swords, the lion, the crown, and there are veterans for justice. Okay, an old army vehicle, various flags, flag of the parachute regiment, the purple field with the, with the parachute on it. And so the parachute regiment was serving there, and um, most controversially, it was in Derry, some people call it London Derry in 1972. And on the 30th of January 1972, there was an incident which is commonly known as Bloody Sunday, when the parachute regiment um, shot dead 14 people and they injured a further 13. None of the parachute regiment was, was killed, none of them were shot. Uh, they might have had some minor injuries from bottles and stones and things like that. So it was a highly contentious episode and there was the Savile inquiry, went on for goodness 12 years, cost hundreds of millions of pounds, but really got to the bottom of it. There's never been such an exhaustive inquiry, spoke to thousands of witnesses and saw thousands of photos, some footage of film. There wasn't that much film at the time. Not many people had cameras back in the 70s. These things were very pricey back then, especially in Derry, which was an economically depressed area. Um, anyway, so um, there's been talk of, of uh, preferring murder charges against people. For example, Soldier F, the, the parachute uh, soldiers who were involved, they're just known by letters as in Soldier A, Soldier B, Soldier C, and so forth, to anonymize them. But um, so Soldier F, uh, he's very controversial what he did. So firing broke out. I don't know the whole story, I haven't read it. It's hundreds of pages long, the report. Was there a shot, was it from the, the RUC behind the, the walls of Derry, and then an echo chamber effect? made it sound like there was a few shots of whatever, or did the IRA fire a shot? It's the fact believe the IRA fired even just one shot, who fired first? Anyway, certainly the, the parachute regiment overreacted. Now, they were on a hair trigger response. Two IUC officers had been killed two days earlier. The re parachute regiment came under attack almost every day in Derry with bottles, with sticks, with Molotov cocktails. Those are bottles full of petrol or something which explode when they land. So a lot, a lot of them have been injured. The conflict was already going. And obviously the parachute regiment is a spearhead unit um, and they were the wrong unit to use in quite a delicate situation because yes there's already fighting but you you want to de-escalate it not to escalate it but they they perceive situations as a battle if you're my enemy we're just going to kill you this is a dangerous area anyone's here we're just going to assume you're my enemy but anyway so several people were shot the soldiers were ordered to stop firing soldier f and some others carried on firing for several more minutes he shot some people dead when they're already lying wounded on the ground this was not Really, his place to judge. He wasn't doing it out of mercy, but you know they've got no weapon. You've got no reason to believe they're a weapon. They're not a threat to you. They're not trying to grab your weapon or assault you or any of your comrades or anything like that. So um, I do not stand with soldier ref. Some of these guys do. Um, so obviously soldiers are allowed to kill people in a combat situation. They can't just go and shoot anyone um, if they've got no reason to believe they think someone's an enemy. Well, that's not okay. So that's where they're wearing these army surplus things. They're waving their flags. And there are lots of um, motorcyclists with army flags behind them. The Welsh flag, the Union flag, the flag of the Brigade of Guards on this, on this Jeep here. So it's got um, blue, red, blue, these horizontal um, bars. That's the Brigade of Guards, um, as in or the Household Division is also called. That's the, the ones you see outside Buckingham Palace in the red tunics and the black bearskin hats, or indeed the cavalry regiments. Um, so their motto is seven joined in one, as in Coldstream Guards, Scots Guards, Grenadier Guards, Welsh Guards and Irish Guards, that's an Elder Foundation. And the two regiments of Horse Guards, the Blues and Royals and the Life Guards. That's one regiment, the Blues and Royals. So, and you can see this one of the Welsh Guards, got the, the Leak of Wales in the middle and Cymru Ambeth, Wales Forever in the Welsh language. And so here comes the more guys. I find them bloody annoying. I hate these Hells Angels guys. So noisy, I wish they'd crash. Okay, I think I'll switch off in a minute. So a police escort, they're certainly garnering public attention for their cause. And this is a bit of horse guards parade actually for the cavalry regiments. Go into the, their museum of the horse guards. They guard on horseback. 